fireball flying across. Hey everyone, this is Bethany. Welcome back to Joyful Habits. I'm very excited to dive in today because we have another autumn themed video, but not only that, we have an autumn themed video that includes food. I don't know what it is about this time of year, if it's just the cozy vibes or the cooler weather, but the autumn season always gets me in the mood to make some yummy food, some cozy warm drinks, and yeah, just enjoy eating them all. <laughs> so today we're going to be making some fall themed hot chocolate, but we're going a step further with that. We're gonna make this into a type of gift basket that you can give to a friend or keep for yourself or whatever you wanna do. This basket is going to include everything someone would need to make a delicious cup of hot chocolate, but more specifically, a delicious autumn themed cup of hot chocolate. Okay, so let's dive right in. The first thing we're going to be making is a homemade hot cocoa mix. To make a homemade hot cocoa mix, you pretty much just need cocoa powder for the chocolate, sugar for the sweetness, and a lot of people also add powdered milk. I'm not going to be adding the powdered milk because I'm just going to have the hot chocolate base be milk instead of hot water. Um, I also just didn't have powdered milk on hand, so. <laughs> but feel free to add that if you'd like. And then we're also going to be adding some pumpkin spice to, again, add that autumn touch. And now we're gonna be adding our sugar. You can add white sugar, brown sugar, whatever sugar you have on hand. I had some of this raw cane sugar on hand, so I decided to use that. And all the recipes and measurements in this video, along with all the items that I could find links to, will be in the description box below, so be sure to check that out if you are interested. Now, if you were paying attention, you'll remember that I mentioned three ingredients for this homemade hot cocoa mix. The cocoa powder, the sugar, and the pumpkin spice. You'll notice I only put two ingredients in and am now proceeding to cover the jar. That's the bad news. The good news is that I do eventually remember and add in the pumpkin spice, but only after I completely cover it and decorate it and then have to take all of that off. So stay tuned for that in a little bit. So I first cut out a square of wax paper to cover the jar with, and then I grabbed some fabric and I'm going to cover that with the fabric. Keep in mind, this is definitely not long-term storage or airtight or any of that. Again, this is meant to be a gift basket that you make and you give away and they, you know, use up fairly soon. So if you think you want it to be sealed a little better, you could certainly just use a mason jar lid and then maybe put the fabric over that. So now that I have the parchment paper and the fabric cut and on top of the jar, I first put a rubber band around it just to hold it in place. Makes it a lot easier to then tie the twine around the jar. I've tried holding it all in place and then tying the twine around it. And believe me, if you put a rubber band first, it just is so much easier. I know sometimes life can be tough. Public service announcement of be careful when you are trying to light candles with matches. Long story short, I have been having a hard time lighting these matches. Where did they go? One second. Ugh, this room is very cluttered. So I'm not going to show you <laughs> what it looks like behind the camera, but uh, yeah. So as you can see, from the side of the box, how scratched up it is. I've been really struggling lighting these matches. And so 
I thought, why not put a little more oomph into it? And so I put some oomph into it and it worked. It lit the match, but it literally snapped off the end of the match and sent a fireball flying across my desk right in the middle of all my greenery and decorations and yeah so i panicked a little luckily i put it out immediately however it left a black uh burnt spot on my desk so that's there forever now so we have my whole setup here and if you zoom in do you see that black spot right there and it does not want to come off like at all it's completely burnt into the desk and uh, yeah I'll show you Ooh, that's blurry I'll show you the the culprit come on focus focus there we go nope there we go yeah here's the culprit so like I said it worked it lit and then proceeded to fly across the desk like so moral of the story don't put too much oomph into lighting matches okay so that disaster's over and back to what we were doing so i've got the rubber band in place i tied the twine around it and made a cute little bow and now i'm just kind of trimming it because the fabric and the parchment paper are a little too big and covering a little too much of the jar. If you're noticing those fun vintage scissors that I've been using, I found those super inexpensive on Amazon. And not only are they fun looking, but they're also really sharp and work really well. So again, check out the description box below if you see anything you're interested in. I do try to provide links to as many items as I can find. And there we have our cute little jar of cocoa mix. this is where I remember oh yeah pumpkin spice <laughs> so I had to take everything off put the pumpkin spice in and uh, now I'm just sealing it back up I decided to try a different colored thread I have some embroidery thread here and I thought this I don't know, sort of orange, yellow, gold color was really nice, so I added that on. All right, let's try this again. Here we have, again, our cute little jar of homemade cocoa mix. So I've had these molds for a while now. If you saw my video last fall where I made five pumpkin flavored cozy autumn drinks, I used this pumpkin mold there where I froze, I was making a autumn inspired cold brew and I froze the coffee into these pumpkin shaped coffee ice cubes. If you haven't seen that video, I'll have that linked below. That was a lot of fun, but I'm pulling the molds out again because now we are going to make pumpkin shaped chocolates. My idea here is that when they make the hot cocoa they'll heat up their milk, they'll add in the cocoa powder and then they'll drop one of these chocolate pumpkins in and let it melt into their hot cocoa to add some extra chocolatey goodness. These other molds that I have are these fun little spoons and so again my idea was that they can stir up their chocolatey drink with a chocolate spoon and then as it melts they can just drop it in and again it just makes that hop -a, hop -a, hop -a, hop -a, <laughs> and again it just makes that cup of hot cocoa into a rich cup of hot chocolate. 
So the chocolate I'm using is just a bag of milk chocolate chips. But what I did is when I melted the chocolate chips down, I added some coconut oil. This is just a method that makes the chocolate a little bit more runny and easier. Like if you were making homemade ice cream bars and you wanted to dip them in the chocolate or you wanted to dip, you know, strawberries or like we're doing here, you want to pour it into a mold. It just makes it a little bit easier. And then it also just kind of gives the chocolate more of that shiny finish, smooth, you know, look to it once it hardens up. So I went ahead and put our chocolate molds in the freezer just to harden them up quickly. If you have more time and you're not in a hurry, you could put it in the fridge. Then I decided to wrap the chocolate pumpkins. I would just cut little pieces of the parchment paper, wrap them in the parchment paper, and then using some uh, orange colored embroidery thread that I had would just tie a cute little bow around them like they're a cute little package. our cute little mini packages of chocolate. So now onto the chocolate spoons. I really love these and I decided to just do the same thing. Wrap them in the parchment paper and tie a little bit of the embroidery thread around them to keep them closed. I chose a different colored embroidery thread this time, more of a brown. chocolate spoons. So as I mentioned earlier, a lot of people will add powdered milk into the hot cocoa powder mix. Again, I decided not to do that because one, didn't have it on hand, and two, I'm planning on, you know, having milk as the base instead of hot water. So I had one of these cute little milk jugs left over from one of my videos last year. If you saw my honey and milk candle video, I used these to make uh, candles that looked like little jugs of milk to go along with the little honey jars that were candles but looked like little honey jars. I'll have that video linked below too if you haven't seen that. But anyway, I had one of them left over, and so I thought, hey, let's fill it with milk and put it in this basket. <laughs> so I'm just covering it with a piece of parchment paper and a little rubber band. Again, this is meant to be <laughs> sort of given away kind of immediately and consumed within a reasonable time. So if you think it's going to be longer, you know, or more time before it gets used up, maybe put a real lid on it or, you know, something a little bit more sealed off. And there we have our cute little milk bottle. So I'm grabbing another little mini mason jar and I'm going to be filling this with pumpkin puree. The idea is when they're making their cup of hot chocolate, they will heat up the milk, they'll add a little spoonful of pumpkin puree, they'll add the cocoa powder, they'll add one of the chocolate pumpkins to melt in there, and then when they pour it into their mug, they can stir it with their chocolate spoon, and yeah, you see where I'm going with this. So for this little mini jar, I put the lid on first, and so therefore I didn't really need to put the parchment paper, and uh, then I cut another piece of fabric, and you know, put it on top and put the rubber band around it. 
and then picked out some embroidery thread. I decided to go with a really nice deep green color. And I just wrap that around a few times and then tie the little bow. And now, once again, I'm just sort of trimming off the extra until I like how it looks. Is not the cutest little jar of pumpkin you've ever seen. I don't know what is. <laughs> so quick little shout out to my aunt who saved these jars for me. I believe they were yogurt jars, but she saved them for me because she knows I'm constantly doing all these little crafts and things for my channel. And uh, yeah, I thought they would work really well here. They were just the right height for the cinnamon sticks that I wanted to include in this basket. So I just put a few cinnamon sticks in there and again covered it with fabric and another rubber band and then just gave it a trim. to include a whole nutmeg in case they wanted to grate that over top of their hot chocolate. Okay, so I think now we have all the components of our hot chocolate basket, and so now we just gotta put it all together. I found this basket at a local consignment shop for like 50 cents, so that was awesome. And I just put some fabric in it, and now I'm just going to add all the ingredients. This mug on Amazon it came with a lid and a tea strainer and also this really fun spoon and while I was at the store the other day I saw these chocolate wafers that are like straws so I thought those would be kind of fun to add in because you might want to put that in your hot chocolate and then I had these from last year they're coffee like stencils that you put over top of your drink and then you can make a design by like powdering cinnamon over top or something like that. And there are lots of fun shapes, you know, pumpkins and autumn themed things. So I thought those would be really fun to add in. For the chocolate spoons, instead of just putting them in the basket, I decided to grab another one of those yogurt jars and have them standing up in there. And I thought that looked really nice. And then I just tucked in all the pumpkin chocolates.
So I found this really nice stationery pack on Amazon. It came with four designs. Each design had stationery, an envelope, and stickers with it. I thought they looked very autumn, kind of fall themed, so I decided to use one. I chose this deer uh, design. And I just wanted to put something in the basket that listed out everything in the basket. Maybe some instructions for making the hot chocolate. Uh, maybe a reminder to <laughs> put the perishable items in the fridge, you know, things like that. So I think that's everything I want to put in the basket, but I decided to grab some of this greenery and just sort of tuck it in between the ingredients to fill out the basket and decorate it a little bit. I like this greenery because it has a lot of kind of golden yellow tones to it. So it's not like a very bright, vibrant sort of summer green, but more of like a late summer early fall, you know, kind of September vibe to it. And there we have our finished hot chocolate basket. I gotta say, I'm really happy with how this turned out. I was kind of making it up as I went, but I think it came together really well. And uh, I would certainly be happy to get something like this. Okay, hi, it is 10.30 at night. I am exhausted and my phone battery is at like 8%. So we'll see if we can get through this outro without it dying on me. Anyway, we made this today. <laughs> I can't seem to get it to focus because it only wants to focus on my face. Um, maybe if I hide my face. Is it focusing? Oh, it is focusing. Okay, so I'll just keep my face really close to the basket and then it will think the basket is my face. Pretty happy with how it turned out. I, as usual, was kind of just making it up as I went, but I think all the things I added in there are going to work pretty well. As I say all the time, uh, possibilities truly are endless though, so feel free to get creative. If there's something I put in there that you don't like, leave it out. Uh, maybe add some other fun stuff. I don't know. You know, just get creative and have fun. If it sounds yummy, throw it in there. I do just want to throw a quick disclaimer out there though, because I don't want anyone getting sick. Uh, a lot of the items in this basket are kind of perishable, like the milk and the pumpkin puree, and even the chocolates can get kind of melty and icky after a while. So I would definitely recommend making this as close to the day that you plan to give it away as possible or as close to the day you plan to consume it. Keep it in the fridge, you know, in, in between. You can put the milk and the pumpkin puree and even the chocolates probably, just so everything stays nice and we don't get food poisoning. Just a little disclaimer. <clears throat> With that being said, my phone is literally dying right now. 
So I'm gonna head out, but I hope you had fun making this basket with me today. I hope it's inspired you to go out there and create your own basket or at least enjoy a cup of hot chocolate. And with that being said, my name is Bethany. This is Joyful Habits, where we daydream and add a touch of whimsy to the ordinary. I'll see you all very soon. And until then, keep smiling. Bye friends.